welcome back to Llama Mama Kayla's Yarn Tube. I'm Kayla. I live in Louisiana and I am so grateful that you stopped by for a visit today. So why don't you grab yourself a drink, maybe a snack, and a project to work on and let's visit. Thanks for joining me at my desk today, friends. I am just crocheting and just being lazy and enjoying my Saturday. <laughs> it is Saturday here and we're not doing anything. We are just relaxing, chilling, just having a lazy day. And I'm sure Big Daddy needs that. And I know I need it. <laughs> so we're just... that Big Daddy's back there napping on the love seat. And I'm in here. And I have my coffee with a peep in it. And I gotta tell you a story about the peeps. So, yesterday I was in Shreveport... Because of a doctor's appointment. And anyway, after that, I did go in Target. And <laughs> there was a little family there beside me. Um, I was just, I was grabbing something for our Big Daddy to have a snack on the way home to help keep him awake. You know, if he had something to like just eat and keep him awake <laughs> so he didn't fall asleep. Because I thought I was really exhausted and I thought, well, I'm going to end up falling asleep for sure. But anyway, there was this little family beside me, and the husband said to the wife, um, don't get any peeps because I'll eat the whole package. And so I said, well, have you tried peeps in your coffee? He said, in my coffee? I said, yeah, you should try that. And the wife said something. He said, yeah, she said, try the peeps in the coffee. And he reached over and got two packages. <laughs> Oh, I was laughing as I was walking away. Like, I didn't really slow down when I said all that. I just kind of said it in passing. And he was reaching over getting two packs. <laughs> I'm drinking some caramel coffee today. With a little peep in it. But my peep fell over sideways. And the... <laughs> And it left some nasty on the side over here. Um, the peep has, is pink with blue specks. And so, this peep was tired. It immediately fell over to the side. Most of the time, they will float upright. But every now and then, you get one that's just lazy and, you know, wants to lay down. But it left this pink and blue has left, like, not a very appealing color on the side over there. <laughs> so when I drink it, I'm trying not to look at that. I'm either turning it around this way or right here. Because I don't want to look at that right there as I'm drinking it. <laughs> but it is very good. So, before I get started... Well, before I start crocheting, I meant, <laughs> I was going to tell you guys, you know, yesterday I had an appointment in Shreveport, which is about two and a half hour drive for us. Um, that's including our stops along the way. So what I went for was a, I have a pain pump in my stomach, um, on my left side, no, my right side. <laughs> I have a feeding tube on the left side. On the right side, um... I have a um, metro, pre, metro, Medtronic pain pump. It's under the skin. It's just right up under the skin. But it's, a, it's about the size of like a hockey puck or a skull can, something like that. And it's not real thick. It's, it's probably about like that. And on the one side of it, okay, it's a circle. But on one side of it, it has like this little triangular place that kind of sticks off. And on that part, it'll be this um, squishy part in the middle, like a rubber squishy part, I guess. I don't know what it's really made of. It may not be rubber. But that's where they can insert a needle to refill the pump once you use all your medication. I'm not there yet. I think I'm due for a refill in March. No. May. <laughs> and it was starting with an M in May. But what I went for 
um, yesterday was a, um, an adjustment on my medication. So I'm going every two weeks and they're lifting my medications. So what I do is I hold this part right here on my stomach over the pump and kind of mash it on there just a little bit. And then this thing will read the pump. This little phone, it's a little Samsung phone in this little case. Um, it will read the pump and then tells it to this, you know, the, the little thing, this thing reads the pump and communicates back to this phone and it, it goes around reading it and then it will say, you know, it's giving me the bolus. With this pain pump, I get medication, I'm getting morphine continuously, 24 hours a day, but I can get four bonuses through this and so right now I have to wait another hour and 13 minutes before I can get another bolus but anyway and then it tells me here like um you know I get four bonuses a day it takes one minute for the medication to go through and it's four hours in between boluses I'm locked out for four hours before I can get another bolus. But anyway, um, and then it shows my bolus dose, which is very, very low. That's why he's raising it 20% every two weeks. And then my daily dose is still very low. And we're raising it every two weeks. Um, and, and eventually, we don't want to raise it too much too quickly. We want to take it slow, let my body get used to it, or let my body decide, oh, this is a good amount, or no, I need more, rather than just starting with a larger amount, and then you don't go up and then go down. You start from the bottom and go up with pain medicines. Obviously, you don't want to take more than you actually need. So anyway... That, that's what we're doing, and this is my little device that I carry around with me. Most of the time, it just sits on the kitchen counter, and I just leave that phone part. I just leave it plugged up, and at night, I plug both of them up, and they're just laying on the kitchen counter, you know, charging, because this one has a little, it's like a little cell phone charger type thing for this one and for this one. They both have their own. So anyway... That is what I go to Shreveport for every two weeks. Now, I also go to Shreveport to see a rheumatologist, but this appointment was for the pain pump. Anyway, the pain pump doctor is so very nice. Like, everyone over there is so super nice. I mean, they're just a great group, a great office. Um, just right off the bat, they're all super, super nice. Uh, I just love that whole office and that whole little center where we go because it's more than just that office in there there's other doctors but i've seen a gi doctor there and the pain pump doctor there and both of just the offices all the personnel are just great and that's just you know just awesome but anyway um so we had our day in Shreveport. It started off a rainy, rainy day, and I'm always nervous about getting on interstate in the rain, because uh, then diesels just fly past you. You know, they just don't have no concern for the little vehicle on the road. <laughs> they are just flying past you, no matter how hard it's raining, right? <laughs> oh. But we made it. We made it safely. Um, and then we, we got over there. And um, actually, we made it a little bit early for my appointment. I thought we was going to be rushing to get there. But we made it a little bit early. Because we left the house a little later than we had thought we would. Um, and then... Um, Anyway, we went to a 
restaurant that Big Daddy had looked up online called the Blind Tiger. He wanted to go eat there. So, um, we went there and ate. <laughs> oh, I told my friend Angela something that I don't want to gross you out, so I probably shouldn't say it. But, you know, y'all know I throw up. Um, if I had just stopped, I ate some crab cakes that were super good. If I had stopped there, I might have been okay. But, I, it was so yummy. It was so yummy. I just wanted to eat it. And I was hungry, too, okay? <laughs> and so, I did continue to try to eat other things until I could no longer eat other things. <laughs> I should have just stopped at the crab cakes because I didn't, I wasn't feeling bad up to that point. Anyway, it was very good though. And Big Daddy definitely wants to go back there again. He said, yes, this is our place. <laughs> I took a little bit, bit of um, video footage and so you'll see that somewhere in here. You can see some uh, video clips of just our day. Here's just a few clips of our day after my doctor's appointment. Big Daddy wanted to go to this restaurant here, the Blind Tiger. It's the big gray building on the corner there in front of us. And so that's what we did. We went there and had lupper, which is lunch and supper, mixed together. <laughs> So, parking for that restaurant is back behind the restaurant, I guess unless you park somewhere else and walk there, which we were not planning to do. So, we are making a block, going down a couple of blocks and turning back to come back behind that restaurant. And so, I don't know, the same little clip might be in there twice here, I'm not really sure. Maybe not. Maybe not. It's different. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> so anyway, we're trying to make our way back behind that big gray building to find parking. And parking is a lot different there than it is in my town. Um, a lot of places you have to pay to park there. And we don't do that here in my town. So that's not something we're used to. But um, even the parking lot behind the restaurant, you have to pay to park there and I think it was like five dollars and something for two hours of parking um so I don't know we're, we're just not used to that here I know some other big cities probably have that too but um we don't have that here so we're pulling in and we're a little bit confused because one sign's laying on the ground the other sign's saying something about paying to park but we don't see any a person to pay because um, sometimes in this town, they'll have like little booths at the parking lot to pay someone. But this one did not. And so we're a little bit confused. Like, who do we pay? How do we pay? Do we pay inside the restaurant? We don't know. We just had questions. <laughs> when you're not used to that, you just don't know how it works. So as we're pulling around, we see that sign over in the corner that you scan with your phone and then you pay like that so again what about for people who don't have cell phones what about people who have the flip phone or something you know and their phone's not up to date i just i just don't like that they expect everyone to have a flip phone <laughs> so big daddy's paying and i guess i didn't realize it was going to take him as long as it did i think he had to walk back over to the car and get our license plate number and so I'm just filming and thinking he's like right behind me and he's not. <laughs> but I'm walking up to the restaurant, which is at the big in front, the front part of this building here that I'm walking up to. So anyway, we don't do any walking in our town. Like we drive from store to store and place to place. And usually parking is like right outside the door of where we go. And so we don't do any walking like that. And so this was kind of interesting. 
And this, this is whole building. I love old buildings. And as you can see the picture on there, you know, I mean, that was just interesting. And it's got big Chicago at the top. That sign up there says Chicago. So I don't know what kind of place that really was, but it's no longer in operation. The board, the doors are boarded up and the windows are boarded up too and some some of the glasses are broken in the windows and such but anyway um this is actually from sitting inside the restaurant looking out the window that's where i just walked up to come into the building and so i was just getting a little clip of there from the inside the restaurant looking out so it was a very nice lunch we enjoyed it so much it was just a relaxing place to sit and have lunch and visit for a little bit. Well, and then, Jane, I wanted to tell you that we, when we was leaving that restaurant, we were four minutes away from that place that you want me to photograph. And so, we took off to it. Now, keep in mind, we don't really know Shreveport, but we can use a map, right? We can use our phone, well, Big Daddy can. I, I don't know how. But he can, you know, put in the address and use his phone to pull up directions or whatever. So that's what we did. Girl, we we tried twice. We circled back and tried to do it again and still could not get over. Like, the traffic there is not like our traffic here at home. <laughs> it's, um, you know, a little bit bigger city. Um... But we, we went, and the first time, we we couldn't get over to take the exit that we need to take. Well, you're just going down this road. You're just going down this road, and it, it has all these, like, you go this way, this way, this way, or this way. It has, like, four places you take. But at the same time you're coming up here, there's a barrier, um, like a concrete wall, half wall right here you're coming up this other cars are coming up this way too and there's this little concrete wall so you can't get over until you get on up here where this exit is the exit's right here the concrete wall ends about right here and all these cars are coming here and the cars behind you and beside you and everywhere they're all dispersing over to these places and we could not get over so we just had to go straight and we was able to get off and turn back and we come all the way back around and tried it again and the traffic was just too heavy by the time you got to the end of this barrier wall to tr you know to try to get over to take the exit that's right there the traffic is just too heavy. So, Big Daddy said, he, he was a nervous wreck by then. <laughs> I was too, because oh, we were about to get killed. <laughs> so, he said, we will try this next time from a different direction. Like, we won't be over here and put in the directions to end up with that again. We somehow know we got to figure out how to get in this lane over here on this side of that barrier wall <laughs> so jane we did not get that picture yet but we will we're going to try next week so it'll be in two weeks we'll go back and give it another go <laughs> that was crazy though we were just like i was like you can't go you can't go he's trying to get over and i'm like no 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 you can't you can't there's no break there was no break in the in the traffic so that was real interesting. But we had a good day. Um, hold on one second. Let me just count this and make sure I'm on track. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Huh. Huh. <laughs> I think I'm off by one, but let me see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Ugh, now I'm off way worse. Let me go back. Don't y'all just hate that? <laughs> I'm 
Okay, here's my last increase. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and then an increase. Over here, one, two, oh, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute, let me sing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Increase. That still don't leave enough spaces there. But you know what? It's just going to have to work. It doesn't leave enough spaces, but I'm just going to go with it. Because I'm not ripping this out, okay? <laughs> and that's a good thing about amigurumi type things. You can just fudge it as you go and fix it. But. Huh. Okay. So anyway. But we had a good day. We did go to Joanne's. Um... And Big Daddy went in with me and Joann's, and then we went to Michael's, and I ran in to see if they had any of those cinnamon swirl cakes. They didn't have no cinnamon swirl cakes. They did have um, some striped cake that we don't have here, that I don't have, we don't have in the store here in my town, but they had it in that store. Um, so anyway, I did not, but I did find a peach in a peach color that I can tie in with the baby blanket that I was going to make. So, that was good to find that peach. And then I ran on out because Big Daddy was in the car. But, um, we just done a few things. I ran in Five Below to see if they have an item that we don't have here in my town at my Five Below. But they didn't have it either. So, maybe it's on their website, but not available. But sometimes, you know, websites say that and it is in the store. I know my Walmart's bad about that. But anyway, I was just checking. It didn't take me but a minute to just run in and look. But anyway, I'm almost finished with this circle that I'm doing. I just got to, um, I got to put two rows of pink on it. At Joann's, I did buy another whole set of this yarn. Let's see. Because I, I really bought this yarn for a blanket that I'm going to do. And so... <laughs> but I only need one skein each for the blanket that I'm going to do. Um, But I ended up starting some more projects with it because I was just dying to use this yarn. It is the Big Twist Value. Uh, let's see what colors it is. I have hot pink, bright orange, varsity yellow, slime, cyan, and just a purple that really is not like a neon purple, but it just kind of goes with that flow. It's called lilac. It just kind of goes in that, well, colored that tone, so. But I did buy a whole nother set of this, so. I think, it, I think I'll be good. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And I'm probably going to count that one more time, and I'm sorry if that irritates you. But, uh, I have to count several times sometimes. Just to check myself. Because sometimes I can count it three times and get a different number each time. That's that's just crazy. But that's what I do. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay. Okay. Yep. Okay. 
So then I increase. I'm just increasing this out. And like I said, this particular. Uh, I hate it when that yarn is all splitty on me. Uh, someone had asked about the hook I was using, and actually they asked this when I was using the pink one like this, so I'm going to show those in one second. Let me just finish this little row up with my two stitches left. <laughs> it's supposed to have been six. <laughs> but you know what? It's going to be okay. It is going to be okay. In the end, nobody's going to look at that and say, Oh, you didn't have six stitches left over at the end of this. <laughs> uh, okay. So, this hook that I'm using is a 5 millimeter. And this one is a 5.5, and this is what I've been using on that baby blanket, that duck baby, baby, blah, 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 duck baby blanket that I've been working on. And so, someone asked, what hook are you using? It's a Susan Bates 5.5 hook. It is the one with the black um, handle. I don't have another one here anywhere to show you that I know of um but anyway it's just a black candle on it I don't know what those are called some you know sometimes hooks are just um a metal hook like this but this one actually has a black rubbery handle and so that's what I'm using and it just has rubber bands on it to make the it a little bit bigger it's not really quite big enough for me because I need about a I need about a three three inch grip and this one is significantly smaller but the reason why I'm not using these like I probably have a 5.5 or in this the reason why I'm not using this one is because um just after my surgery, well, I keep going up instead of down. I'm trying to find the hook. It wouldn't be a G, would it? I don't know. What size hook do I need? A, 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 I think I'm looking for an I, right? It doesn't say it. On here but I think I'm looking for an eye because I think that would be a 5.5 right because a 6 is a J and a 5 is an H so okay so that's the size I'm looking for this this handle would be much more comfortable but right now as I'm learning to recrochet without this finger because I you know I had that finger amputation one night I was just sitting here crocheting with you guys and I was using a hook that's like this in the head which is like a boy type hook or a clover type um, head and the yarn was splitting on me so bad because I didn't have good enough tension it wasn't the yarn's fault or the hook's fault it was me not having a, gr a good enough tension on it and it was just splitting really bad on me and so I just reached over and grabbed um, this Susan Bates head and it worked better for me because of the way I'm having to um, go in and grip and pull through and all that I just needed something that grabbed the yarn a little better and this Susan Bates yarn worked better than the uh, not Susan Bates yarn. Susan Bates hook worked better than the boy type hooks. This just worked better at the moment. Now after I get get more comfortable crocheting and my tension gets better, it'll you know I can probably go back to using these. I mean I have used my finger hook 
sense all that just on something else. But I'm just saying that as I'm working, this this head seems to be working a little bit better for me right now. At times, I still have trouble with this too, though. So it's not per it's not a perfect um, fix, but it is helping. So you know what? I need to. I needed to change to a new color as I was doing that, change, finishing that last stitch. So I need to do that. <laughs> Ew, let me grab my pink. That where it is okay let me just pull my pink through tighten my orange down my trouble when I'm crocheting is my tension right here at the project and I've had lots of suggestions that I appreciate I do appreciate suggestions all day long but I haven't found one that's gonna that actually works for me just yet. Um, like I said, my tension is right here. It's this loop on the hook that I need to keep tight. And so, using um, uh, this this tension ring does not work. It don't even fit on my thumb. It will not fit on my thumb. So, that's out. Other suggestions have been, like, my Yarn Genie, which I love my Yarn Genie. Wool Genie, whatever you want to call it. But, it's not... It doesn't keep the tension tight. Um, it does not do that. That's not what it's for. Whew. Okay. <laughs> now I'm on with my orange. My pink. My pink. Yes. So. I need to make a bunch of, bunch of stitches. <laughs> with my pink. Let me see. That's where I'm starting at. I need to take this one off. And actually I thought I was using a different color. I am. I am. Well. I'm gonna cut this in a moment. Right now, I want to I want to get some stitches in before I cut it. So anyway, guys, that's that's what we got going on around here. Is nothing. We're really just recuperating from yesterday. Um, I think Big Daddy learned. Maybe, hopefully, I don't know that when I say pull over, I mean pull over like now, not go searching for a place to pull over. Because <laughs> uh, I, I pretty much threw up the rest of the afternoon. Even after I come out of Joanne's, I went in, I don't know where all I went. I went in Target, Michael's, and Five Below, and then we were going to get on the road to head home. And we stopped at Sonic to get a shake because I was hungry. Because, you know, I threw up what I ate. And so, I couldn't even drink. The shake wouldn't even go down. Like, ice cream would not even go down. And so, we left there and I was just like, oh, pull over. And he's like, looking for the perfect place to pull over. I'm just like, pull over. I just opened the car door and got sick. I normally like to keep an empty drink cup in the car, like an empty Sonic cup or some kind of restaurant cup. Um, because that, you know, I need that. But Big Daddy just 
he doesn't want anything in the car and throws them away and yeah but anyway so we're just kind of recuperating from yesterday pretty much because it was a long day but I am thankful that I did get to go in Joanne's and I'll be doing a video on that and also I got to run in Michael's to see if they had that cake they did not but I'm I'm pretty sure my Michael's will get it back in so I'm not you know stressing over that or anything it's a certain cake I'm looking for but Michael's will probably get it back in maybe next week or so it could be sitting in the back of Michael's right now they're so slow at putting out merchandise and I can say that because both of my sons have worked at Michael's and yes look at that some <laughs> uh, I'm glad I didn't cut that yarn yet because I'm going to need that to be the tension there what did I do okay I pulled up the wrong color as I was going to the next stitch because it's still connected and I want to leave it connected for just a little bit while I make a few more stitches but now I can pull up the right color <laughs> I pulled up the wrong tail through there glad I caught that before I got too far around But yeah, um, my trouble with the tension is right here, keeping that loop small as I'm pulling through and all that. And usually the loop gets too big while I'm trying to go in here. So I'm just having to work very closely to the project and try to keep that a little bit small. Don't let that loop get so loosey-goosey. Because that's what happens on me. Especially when I'm doing like double crochets and stuff. When I gotta um, yarn over and then go in. It is hard to keep that loop on the hook tight. But when you're doing amigurumis, you really much have, you have to. Or you will have, you know, gappy spaces that show... Your stuffing, your polyfill. And I really should be counting these, but I cannot count and talk at the same time. So I'm just going to have to take a, a break here in a second so I can count them. <laughs> uh, I don't think that's quite enough so I'm making this rainbow because it is going to be part of one of my art dolls now let me just count and see um one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. I went one too far. So this one right here that I'm doing is actually an increase. So I'm glad I counted right at the right spot. It looked about thirteen. I don't know, you ever get that way? Like you crochet so much that you can just gauge what how many stitches I, I do that all the time, and I think it's really weird, like, <laughs> like to know, oh, that looks about like 13 stitches. Okay, I see, so that don't count. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Yes, that worked out right. And then I'm going to put this stitch marker 
right here on my last I increased so on that last little increase there and so y'all probably want to know about my hand and pinky um this hand this is all doing really good it's healing up just like it's supposed to it looks good uh, it's a little puffy i think right here but it's only been three weeks since surgery so i guess you know that's to be expected but you can definitely tell that it is puffier than this hand you can definitely tell there's a puffiness like this whole little area right here is what's puffy but you know it's only been three weeks so it'll probably go down my pinky is just i don't know i don't know i'm trying not to stress over it but it has been hurting a lot and I'm trying not to stress over it, okay? <laughs> so, and I've had lots of suggestions about that too, and I do appreciate that. I don't mind suggestions at all. I don't. That does not bother me. What bothers me is if somebody says, I wish you would do something for your health, like take cayenne pepper. Like cayenne pepper is going to, you know, cure the world. Um, I do have cayenne pepper when Big Daddy makes me um, egg salad and cuts that up really tiny, tiny. The yolk smashes it up and cuts the egg white up tiny, tiny, tiny. I do have cayenne pepper in that. <laughs> but no, I don't think cayenne pepper is the cure-all for Reynolds. Um, and plus, what my what's going on inside my finger... Um, is my veins are thin very very thin and they're very very tiny and they just collapse and so when they collapse blood can't flow like it's not going to flow no matter what you take even if you take viagra which i take it's just not going to flow through there blood thinners whatever you know blood medications you're taking if your vein is closed it's not going to flow and so even if you put leeches on your fingers leech it's not going to flow i mean it's just not and the vasodilator the viagra is to open up veins but mine are so tiny and thin that the Viagra won't even do that. So it, it's just one of those issues. I mean, I'm, they've always said I'm medication resistant. I have been put in ICU and, and given high doses of all these medications trying to work a miracle before. And so they put me in ICU because they were giving me so much of these medications um trying to open that up and just you know see on if anything helps uh, the blood pressure meds the blood thinners the vasodilators all that kind of stuff and it did not make any kind of difference whatsoever so i stayed in icu for i don't know at that time, I don't know, about a week with no change. So they know that I am medication resistant. But anyway, I'm really just trying not to think about that finger too much. But I appreciate if you would keep praying for it. And even if the finger, you know... <sighs> does it make it just be praying for me in general <laughs> that I um you know am able to deal with this because sometimes it does get hard I'm not gonna lie to you I'm not all smiles over here all the time okay <laughs> it gets hard and it gets it gets hard to deal with that and just to to think about the what if is very hard so i'm trying not to think about the what if i'm trying to just 
do what I can with it right now. Does that make sense, guys? Because it's devastating to think about the what if. Already, there's so many things I can't do. Like, I'm having trouble doing. And so, like, basic daily care. I'm having trouble doing a lot of things. And then just things around the house. Like, you don't want to ask somebody to open every little thing you try to open. You want to be able to do that on your own. <laughs> right? And so, that's that's frustrating to me. You mind if I count these real quick? Excuse me. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Look at there. I did it again. Um, it, it is frustrating not to be able to do things, you know, for yourself. Um, you know, such as opening stuff and... Um, getting stuff out of the refrigerator like milk and you know things like that um heavier things that i need to pick up and do it, it um you know and i drop stuff all day long every day every time i pick something up i drop it no matter what it is um I just know that it's, I'm fixing to drop it. <laughs> so I try to, you know, be careful and cautious and pay attention. I don't want to pick up my phone and drop it and, um, you know, shatter my screen or anything. Even though it has a phone case around it. Um, well, not why it's in this holder, it don't. But as soon as I take it out of this holder here on my desk, I'm going to take it out and put it on my desk and put my holder back on it but even with you know a case on it and everything if it if i drop it and it falls just right it is going to shatter that so i'm just trying to be careful with that but also with everything else you know my hands are just not they're not like everybody else's, and so I have trouble picking up things and holding things. But I'm making it. I'm just, you know, doing the best I can. But if I, you know, have anything else to happen, it's going to be even harder than it is now, obviously. Obviously, right? <laughs> Uh, so I really just try not to think about it too much. And when I start thinking about it, I'll just like, no, 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 I can't think about that. I got to think about something else. Uh, but anyway, but we had a good day yesterday in Shreveport. Me and Big Daddy enjoyed our day together. Um, just doing the things we needed to do or, you know, wanted to do. He didn't have anywhere he wanted to go. And, so, uh, but he went in Joanne's with me and helped me, um, talk about some projects, talk about some plans. Um, he and I are doing a, an event in June and it, it's a different kind of event, We've already signed up to do it. Um, we'll have a crochet table there, and he's going to have some cups there. And um, so I'm going to be making some things catered to this group. And not everybody is going to agree with this, but I am participating in this and um, catering some items to this group. Um, because I have a heart <laughs> and I care about people no matter what. So in saying that, um, I did get some yarns for that 
and I want to make some crossbody bags. I want to make some of these art dolls. I just have so many things I want to make and not enough time. Like, I don't know why I have to sleep. <laughs> if I could just crochet 24 hours a day, I could get these things done. <laughs> But seriously, you know, I get, I just get too tired. My hands wear out and have to rest. Because my hands do hurt crocheting. My hands hurt all the time. But crocheting does make them cramp up and hurt. But I'm not giving up crocheting. I'm just going to push forward and do it. Make the best of it. Let me count real quick. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. I went too far. I went too, too far. Okay, if that's thirteen, then this one is my increase one. Let me recount that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Increase. Okay, I hope my counting didn't mess you guys up. Sometimes when I'm working on something, like even a granny stitch, <laughs> oh, I used to do this a lot, but not so much anymore. Back when the kids lived at home, if they come in here and started talking about something that, you know, didn't really amount to anything, it wasn't anything important, it wasn't anything that... I wanted to hear about at the moment. <laughs> I would just start counting. I'd just like 15, 16, and you know, you don't have to count what you're doing. <laughs> Granny stitch clusters. You just do three and move on. But I would start counting sometimes. <laughs> uh, let me see. It's warming up out there today at 63 now. Oh, my, my weather just changed to 64 when I said that. So it's warming up out there. It was really chilly yesterday. The wind was blowing. It was super chilly and rainy. But the sun is out real pretty today. I'm going to get me a sip of coffee. And my coffee is on the cooler side. I don't I don't like hot. And my son Dakota is the same way. He'll let his coffee get ice cold too. We would we both would prefer to drink iced coffee than hot coffee. So we both let our coffee pretty much get cold. He's the same way. I know you, a lot of you guys have been watching Dakota's channel, and I appreciate that so much. And he does too. He really does. He appreciates it. But um, I've been enjoying watching it myself. I'll be so glad though when he can get in to see the doctor and get some blood work done. And see if he's got anything going on. I know this past week, his hands, one of them, I, I think his, I think his left hand was just swollen and his joints were hurting in it so bad. He couldn't, you know, like bend his fingers correctly and stuff. It was just hurting him so bad. So he needs something. He needs to know what's going on with that. But anyway, um, I think he said he's going to be doing a live soon. Maybe even tomorrow on Sunday. I don't know what time he plans on doing it, but um, he said that the other night. We went by and visited him, visited him on Thursday night. So, Windsor, Mont Ma Monty, and Oscar. 
I was trying to combine Monty and Oscar to monster. <laughs> oh, I must combine them to monster. But anyway, went by and saw them. Now, Monty used to live at my house. He used to live here. So he knows me. And he's immediately, you know, when I go in, he's like, Oh, there you are. Well, hold me. I know you want to hold me. <laughs> now, Windsor, he, the dog, he does come and visit us a lot. So, he might know us, but I swear that little dog is not smart. <laughs> I'm sorry to talk about Dakota's dog, but that little ugly thing is not smart. Uh, so, he may not even know who I am. I don't know. He's very friendly. and He does come up for us to pet him and stuff, but I don't know if he even knows he's come to my house before. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Let me count again. Because <laughs> truly, I didn't get that right again. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Okay. But anyway, um, but his cat Oscar, he doesn't know us at all. Um, and usually when we go to Dakota's house, we usually just pull up and sit in the um driveway and he comes out and we just visit out there because it steps the steps going up into his house are really weird. They're not they're not like regular door steps. I don't even know how to explain that. It's so weird. And then when you go in his house, I mean, we can't use the restroom at his house because his steps, his stairs to the second floor where the restroom is, is like climbing a ladder. It is straight up. And so I don't know how Dakota even does that because he walks with a cane. Dakota does. When he's flared up really bad. Now, he might, you know, not use a cane every day if he's not flared up and hurting so bad. But when his hips and are hurting really bad, he's had hip trouble since he was a little kid. Probably started when he was about three or four. He was having hip issues. But anyway, um, the stairs, the steps going up to his house are so weird. Like it's, you almost have to go like from this step to this step to this step to this step to his porch. Because just going up is too high of a step. And the lower step is like you can go up from here to here. But then this is the next lower step. And it's just it's just weird. It's like crazy. Like I don't know who invented that. But they might not have been sober is what I'm saying. <laughs> but anyway so... We don't always go in his house. We usually just, he comes out and sits in the car with us or something and visits. Um, we might ride down to Sonic to get a shave or something and visit, you know. But, um, so I haven't seen Oscar all that much. Like, he's not really that familiar with us. But, um, he acts like he knows us. Like, he just comes right up and, yeah, hold me, pet me, whatever. So, yeah, he's, he's all about his dog, Windsor, and his cats, Monty and Oscar, or Ozzy. I don't know what his name is. Oscar. I think I call him Ozzy, though. Oh, well. <laughs> it fits. I still have, I have another, I feel like I'm going so slow, like, 
painfully slow. I still have another row of pink after this. And then I will be finished with this rainbow head. And you're probably like, what? How is that a head? How is that a rainbow head? Well... It is going to be a rainbow because it is going to fold over like this. And this is the head. So this will be where the neck will go right here. The doll's neck will be right here and then it will come out to the body. And so I'll be putting eyes on it right here and some cheeks and I'll be adding some beads and charms and stuff like that to it. So it's going to end up being cool. I'm going to add a lot of things to it. A lot of extras, decorations, and type things. But, yeah, I'm, I'm happy with the way that's turning out. It's just been a slow crochet for me. I haven't, I haven't done anything. On this, I'm just going to tie these. Tie them and... Probably just after I tie them, trim it just a little bit. But I don't have to trim it too much because all that's going to be on the inside. Well, you know what? Oh, I think I totally messed up. No, 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 I didn't. There's, my, there's where I started. But how did I end up with this? this is where I'm at right here. Hmm. I totally did mess this up. Because this should have ended right here. Oh, looky there. I put too much orange in it. I went around too many times. Yep. I went around too many times. So I gotta rip all this out. <laughs> right? I went around too many times, didn't I? Uh, I'm gonna look at that more closely and count before I actually start ripping them out. But I will rip it out if it's wrong because I won't be able to stand it if it's wrong. But this should not have stopped and started here. It should have stopped and started here. Get what I'm saying? This is where all the others stopped and started. That should have stopped and started over here too. So, I uh, messed up. That's all I can say about it. I messed up. <laughs> But I'm gonna count. I'm gonna before I rip that out, I'm gonna stop and count real good on it and make sure, which that's a strong indication. <laughs> and I probably just wasn't paying attention because I just wasn't paying attention. But I'll pull that out and I think this needs to be pulled out to here maybe and restarted with pink. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Sometimes that happens, right? We mess up and we just have to look at it and count and figure out how to fix it. And so I think that's what I need to do. Just trying to figure out, like, how in the world did I do that? But somehow or another, I thought that was the end. And I think it's because I was using too many of these. Right? That's what I did. I used too many of those. And I thought that was the last one. And it wasn't. 
or I went past what I was supposed to do. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> it's fixable. It's fixable. But I hope you guys are having a good Saturday. And I know I'm just kind of rambling and crocheting on this little um, rainbow. I want to make uh, a cu couple more of these rainbows, actually. And the cake. And I have some other dolls that I want to make. Like heads to make art dolls that I want to make. So, yeah. Just crocheting the rainbow. <laughs> and I also did get the rainbow in regular colors. Not neon colors. And instead of this hot pink, I got red. A regular orange. Which is still a bright orange. But it's not this shade. It's a darker orange. A yellow. A darker green. A normal color like royal blue and then a um you know a normal darker purple so i did get this whole spread in um normal colors also to do some because um sometimes people might not like bright neon colors they might like the rainbow in regular colors <laughs> primary trying, that's why i was trying to think of primary colors so anyway, guys, I do appreciate you watching today and just hanging out with me for a little bit while I was just crocheting and jabbering and telling you about our day in Shreveport, Shreveport. <laughs> but um, I'll let you all get going and I hope you have the rest of your day. It's enjoyable. Remember, it's a beautiful day to crochet or do something else that makes you happy and brings you joy today. Bye, friends.